high peak mountains, glaciers, a stunning turquoise glacier fed lake, and a famous majestic chateau. This real life fairy tale setting is Lake Louise, a little hamlet in Banff National Park in Alberta, in the Canadian Rockies. With an incredible backdrop of Mount Victoria, named after Queen Victoria, and a hanging glacier, this pristine piece of wilderness draws in millions of visitors a year. The lake itself is located in a UNESCO World Heritage Site and renowned for its natural beauty. Its eye-catching turquoise color comes from rock flour carried into the lake by meltwater from the surrounding glaciers and it is known for its abundance of activities. Lake Louise is named after the Princess Louise Caroline Alberta, the fourth daughter of Queen Victoria. It is located 60 kilometers or 37 miles northwest of the town of Banff and it sits at an elevation of 1600 meters or 5,249 feet, making it Canada's highest community. The lake's original name was Ho Run Num Ne, Lake of the Little Fishes, which was named by the First Nations people. It was then for a short time called Emerald Lake, and then finally, Lake Louise. The lake is not very large at 2 kilometers or 1.2 miles in length and 0.5 kilometers or a quarter of a mile wide. It drains through the 3 kilometer or 1.9 mile long Louise Creek into the Bow River. Lake Louise is a year round destination, but if the goal is to go canoeing or kayaking, and just enjoy the lake in its best temperatures and unfrozen, then the best time to visit is in July through September because generally the lake stays frozen through June. In October, you'll find heavy snowfall and by November, the lake is usually frozen. The Lake Louise Ski Resort generally opens the first week of November, around the same time the lake freezes and you can then enjoy sleigh rides, ice skating, ice climbing, skiing, and snowshoeing. We visited the lake twice during early September, once after our stop at Moraine Lake for sunrise due to their close proximity, so nice and early in the morning, and then the second during a mid-afternoon. I particularly enjoyed visiting the lake in the morning. It wasn't very crowded yet and I loved how the shadows in the morning created so many picturesque colors on the lake, truly making for some stunning photographs. I also enjoyed having breakfast at the Fairmont's Chateau Lake Louise, followed by enjoying the Chateau's Adirondack chairs with their unbelievable setting for a nap. Since we were staying at the Fairmont in Banff, we enjoyed the privilege of having free parking at the Chateau, which would have otherwise cost us $30. The Chateau is easily accessible from the Lake Louise parking lots, which you will have to pay the pay stations upon arrival to the lake. $12.25 per vehicle for the day. Overnight parking at Lake Louise Lakeshore is not allowed and parking does fill up quickly. Shuttle service is available, but must be purchased and reserved in advance. And I've included the link in the description. The Fairmont's Chateau Lake Louise, a luxury resort hotel, is one of Canada's Grand Railway hotels and is located on Lake Louise's eastern shore. In 1890, Cornelius Van Horn, a Canadian Pacific Railway manager, 
built a sizable one-story log cabin on the shore of the lake. The small cabin was called the Chalet Lake Louise. In its first year, it accommodated just 50 guests. But over the next two decades, the hotel saw several upgrades and by 1912, it had drawn up to 50,000 visitors. The hotel quickly expanded to a luxury property by 1920. And its beauty drew in prominent public figures, earning it the name of Hollywood of the North. In 1982, the Fairmont Chateau began operating year-round. The hotel is elegant and lavish with grand spaces and crafted decorative details. Even though it's elegant and polished, it's also relaxed and inviting. It has 539 rooms, which you'll enjoy incredible breathtaking views of soaring mountain peaks, the majestic Victoria Glacier, and a glistening turquoise lake. The hotel has restaurants, bars, shops, a spa, and offers sports equipment rentals. When visiting the lake, most of the activities are out of visitors' skill set and interest, but there are several fantastic hikes around Lake Louise, such as the tea houses at Lake Agnes, and the Plain of Six Glaciers, which are popular day hikes and open from about June to mid-October. Canoe rentals at the boat dock make it easy for visitors to canoe on Lake Louise, but are a bit pricey. $135 for an hour for the public and $95 for the hour for chateau guests. Lake Louise is also a small town with a few shops in the Samson Mall. Additionally, the Travel Center displays about the animals and landscape and up-to-date information. The Icefields Parkway to Jasper starts at Lake Louise and in the fall, the highway is open but the businesses along it close until spring. This does also include the gas station and the Icefield Center. So if you're visiting Canada's incredible Rocky Mountains, you'll want to add this postcard setting at Lake Louise in Banff National Park to your itinerary. See you next time.